Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of Tides of Death. Are you guys ready for some unusual gameplay? Always. Yes. That's yes. what I come here for. I'm excited. Yes, these are the answers. So today, my dear friends, you are going to be playing the holy, the righteous, the defenders of all that are good and of the faith. You will be playing as agents of the White Prince. And not just any agents, you are going to be taking on the roles of Lady Goldmane, the Inquisitor on Port Prince, as well as Arknoster, the eighth level wizard who lives on Port Prince, and the Bishop of Port Prince, the highest ranking cleric in the area. Um, the three of you are gonna be working together to help ferret out the Crimson Fists and find out as much information about them as you can so that you can report it to your higher-ups and bring these filthy, degenerate pirates to bay, to justice, to, you know, you gotta find them so you can track them down and hunt them out and smoke them out and kill them. How are we feeling about this? You guys, uh, you guys ready to play the enemy? Absolutely. What do you mean the enemy? We're the good guys. Yes, yes, you get to play the good guys. So, um, we've got a paladin, a wizard, and a cleric, which is not unlike your, your actual composition. So, who wants what? And I will assign you some character sheets, which will give you just a little glimpse into the background of our enemies. Um, I'll take whatever. <clears throat> I can roll for it. You guys want? It's paladin, wizard, and? Cleric. Cleric. Let's all roll for uh, it, no? Yeah. I would just like not cleric. Not cleric. Would be okay. for me. Great. Okay. So why don't you roll um, a d2 on a 1, you're the wizard. On a 2, you're the paladin. You are the wizard. You are Ark Noster. Now, if you remember, we've actually run into Ark Noster the last time you were in Port Prince. Ark Noster cast a fear spell on everybody, and everyone was accepted, affected except for Archie. And Arknoster then offered you a job because you were able to overcome his fear spell, and then that's how you met those those rogues who also saw that jazz go down. So you are going to be Arknoster right here. This dude. Sweet. Um, you should have access to the character sheet and and all of the spells. Cool. Have fun. Yes. I do um, like how he's underneath the category civilized, which kind of implies that we are not civilized. <laughs> the PCs get their own category. They are beyond civilization. Um, Fair. Next players, Archie and Nilrum. You're going to have to fight between Lady Goldmane and the unnamed Bishop of Port Prince. Uh, whoever rolls higher gets to be the cleric. No, the paladin, because of course... Well, the pallet actually the cleric runs the area. The paladin serves them. So the cleric is higher in rank. Um, each of you roll me a d20. Whoever rolls higher gets to be the cleric. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Good. Nice. Okay. Um, so Pokemon challenges. You can be the bishop of Port Prince. Yeah. Uh, Pichal. Pichal. Excellent. And Mr. Moon, you get to be Lady Goldmane. I'm a paladin. A paladin, yes. And Good. we'll bring our characters onto screen here. Um, so for all of those following along at home, this right here is uh, Ark Noster, the eighth level wizard who serves Port Prince. This over here is Lady Goldmane, the seventh level paladin who serves on Port Prince. And this right here is the so far unnamed Bishop of Port Prince, who sort of runs the town and is the, you know, the man in charge. Uh, but we're gonna need a name for the Bishop of Port Prince. What do you got for us, Pokemon Challenges? What is the most important cleric in the Midlands called? Mm. Let's go with 
Give me one second. Cyrus. Good name. I was worried you were going to come up with something to undermine his authority, but well done. Well done. I was going to call him Obama. Okay, chill. <laughs> well, beloved heroes, you are gathered today in the dungeons beneath Port Prince because an interesting person has come across your path. The Anna. <clears throat> Paladin, Lady Goldmane, who hangs out in the harbor, checking boats in and out, you know, gazing upon people, trying to decide who is fair and just, who is here for good, who is here for ill, are there any magic users or anything like that. You have noticed someone, someone that really shouldn't be doing the things that they're doing. Now, a paladin has many abilities, and we've never really talked about them. The first is that a paladin can detect the presence of evil intent up to 60 feet away by concentrating on locating evil in a particular direction. Uh, additionally, you're immune to all forms of disease. You can heal 2 HP per level once per day just by touching someone. You can cure diseases at will. You're surrounded by an aura of protection that's a uh, 10-foot radius. All evil creatures are minus one to hit against you or against anyone in that area. Um, you can turn undead, and you, you're not quite high enough level to cast free spells, but you also get a plus two to all your saving throws. Additionally, Lady Goldmane, you have some magic gear. Um, you've got your Helm of Seeing, which allows you to see who's a wizard, who's a caster, where magic exists. Um, you've got a Ring of Protection plus three and a Ring of Free Action on, but these will all get negated as soon as you bring your your squire brings you your anti-magic shield. Also, it'll negate your plus three longsword, but you don't really care at the point when you've got the anti-magic shield. That's, you know, in case you're fighting a real wizard or something like that. Yeah. Um, our cleric has an amulet of, I'm sorry, a medallion of ESP, which just allows you to sort of focus and read people's surface thoughts, very mild surface thoughts um, at will. So, Lady Goldmane, you're on this. You're on the docks. You see a ship come up. Um, you start looking at these people. They seem fine, but there's something off about one of the folks there. So you grab one of your lackey clerics, you know, one of the lower-ranking clerics that are around, and you get them to sort of probe the area. Maybe one of the lower-ranking wizards casts ESP, and they read the surface thoughts of the captain who's coming off the ship. And to you, she just looks nervous. You know, you've got 18 charisma, Lady Goldmane. You can read people's faces. And this person seemed uncomfortably nervous entering Port Prince. So, of course, you, you get your cleric and your wizard just do a little mind reading just to see what's up. And they report back that she's been thinking sort of like, you know, you can't not think about the elephant in the room, but she's thinking about, oh, my God. I hope I don't get caught here. So you have caught her. She's clearly suspect. Someone thinking, I don't want to get caught. Don't let me get caught. Oh my God, change. Stop thinking about this. Think about anything else. Uh, coins, coins, lots of coins. I love money. I love money. And that's the, the reading that your people bring back to you. You've now arrested this person and brought her down to the dungeons and collected the other two important people in the area to talk about what you're going to do with this person who's clearly suspect, who's clearly trying to hide something from you. Um, and so we'll start the game with the three of you hanging out, you know, above the dungeons in that, like, you know, the area where all the guards hang out, while the dungeons are below them, while they watch it. There's a couple other soldiers here who are, like, standing to stiff attention and trying not to pay too much attention while listening for orders. And, um, well, you've brought everybody here, Lady Goldmane. How would you like to start this off? Um, can paladins talk to their gods at will or no? No, you can't just, like, have a conversation. That, that sort of stuff is limited to, like, 20th level clerics. Got it. Um, <clears throat> I guess I will inform them, uh, why the lady's here. One of the lower clerics has noticed, uh, this person didn't want to be caught at all extremely they kept shuffling their thoughts around i brought them in for questioning i looked at the bishop. seems wise um i mean could be anything could just be a small criminal but maybe there's more here right that is what we need to, to determine 
Maybe yeah. your helm can help us? I motion to the bishop with the mind reading <laughs> helm. Mm, the medallion um, of ESP. Uh, medallion. I, okay. I do also have a mind reading potato. spell. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I have a. Sorry? Go I ahead. was asking what his mind reading spell is. It just says mind read. Um, I don't. Click on it, it'll put it in chat and you can read the whole thing. Yeah, there you go. Well, the sensitive version of the wizard spell ESP, in addition to detecting the surface thoughts of any creature in range, the priest is able to probe deeper into the mind of a single creature. Mind read will always reveal the kind of creature being probed, although this identity may be couched in the creature's own language or in a possibly distorted body image. The spell has a 20% chance of revealing the character's class of the individual, the details, and the usefulness. Okay, so it's just a, a really, really good ESP. Mm -hmm. And here's the medallion of ESP, which essentially allows you to sort of cast ESP at will in any direction. But you know you've got to focus on a zone. I can read her. I can read her deeper thoughts and figure out what she's doing here. A sort um, of yeah. out of character question is: um, mm -hmm. Is there context to our investigation? Like, has something happened recently that? Oh motivates yeah, us? absolutely. There's been all this destruction on the outer rim. Your your bases have been falling apart. One of your ambassadors was killed recently and um, not a prince but like a high-ranking noble who sort of has been the head noble on the outer ring uh, prince virix or lord virix has been slain and is you know castle overthrown um cities have stopped paying taxes and the white prince has called back all the clerics and all the soldiers for the the yearly sort of ceremonies and festivals that involve that happen in the beginning of winter where all the the high-ranking people come back um, exchange information talk about what's going on in the kingdom yada 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 and now that the festival is over um everyone's on high alert because these crimson fists have been fucking everything up they've essentially um ruined the outer ring and now it's time to reconquer them and you know that you know there's a couple of ships being sent out um the Lightbringer, i'm sorry uh, the Lightbringer and thunder toss are headed out there to deal with these people um this person's super fucking sketchy and the crimson fists have been fucking up the world they've really they've really been throwing a wrench in all of the the nice civil society that you've had going for decades okay awesome because i wasn't yeah. sure where in the timeline our investigation was oh yeah yeah uh, like, and then my second question is did i realize from the wanted posters that i had seen archie because mm. i because i had offered him a job in the street Right, you had offered him a job. Um, I will need you to make me a charisma check at disadvantage because you've seen lots of people in your life. Okay, I found um, it. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you definitely you didn't remember Archie. You know, some strong guy in the middle of town passed your saves. You know, whatever that happens from time to time, law of large numbers, someone's gonna pass a save eventually. Um, you don't okay. remember. Okay, I'll, I'll speak. I'll speak up then, and I'll say, <clears throat> "Well, look." These are dangerous times. I don't think standard operating procedures apply here. Every person who could possibly be linked to the trouble at the rim needs to be investigated thoroughly and cleared. Mm -hmm. uh, my suggestion is uh, we go in for a first round of questioning, ask some questions about who they are, where they're from, check our verifications on that information that they give us, and then we go in for another round of questioning. What do you guys think? Sounds good. <clears throat> yeah. We Solid have the tools fun. to make people talk, especially the forces of evil. Do we use torture at all or no? No, you've got mind reading. Good? You've got magic. Oh, okay. You don't need yeah. to dirty your hands with torture. Got it. It doesn't look good. Yeah. It's not, not orderly and kind, you know, civil. Um, I suppose we don't know what we're dealing with yet, so perhaps a standard basic interrogation for at first. Um, would anyone like to take the lead on this? I'll probably look to the wizard with the mind reading spell. Would you like a crack yeah. at it this time? I can... I can figure out what's, what's in her head. Let's, let's move straight to it. Let's find out if she's working with anyone who's trying to oppose us. Right. Uh... Sure. What, what last question? Did you say I also have a medallion of ESP? Uh, the cleric does. The the okay. head cleric. 
you oh. are the Archmage. You're the wizard, yeah? I have um, I have this spell. Gotcha. Right, you've got the Maybe spell. Maybe we can we can get some surface level thoughts via ESP before I use my spell. Um mm-hmm. to figure out what's 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 in really deep. We can do one more surface level reading just to see what's going on. Great. Well down into the dungeons you can head. Our ship captain is locked up in an interrogation cell. There's a lantern that hangs from the ceiling, a magic lantern that was created by our Archmage here once upon a time. Um, if you touch it, you know, it can get lighter, uh, brighter, or dimmer at your will just by, you know, gently touching it and concentrating on um, light change. But otherwise, Anyone it's a... Anyone who it, yeah? Right, right. But otherwise, it's just a, a 10 by 10 cell with a wooden table in the middle of it, um, a little bolt, uh, like a rounded bolt thing in the center where some chains have gone through to some manacles on either side of the ship captain's hands. She's got her clothes on, but all of her gear has been taken and she's been searched by the the guards who do their due diligence. They've checked in all of her equipment into a particular box upstairs, logged it all with descriptions, date and time of when it was found, who it belongs to, you know, following all the procedures to the T. If she's innocent, she needs to get her stuff back and be treated fairly, right? We're not here to harass the good people of the Dardens. And you find her here. She looks up at you a little bit scared, a little bit spooked. I'll dim the light. It's a little bit darker. Um, I excuse me. I'm so sorry. There must have been some mistake. I, I'm, I'm a loyal citizen. I have worked with soldiers of the White Prince before. Um, I, I don't know what's going on, but there, there must be some sort of mistake. Um, could I have cast ESP before I came into this room? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, say, so, oh, I'm, I'm sure if you're an innocent, loyal subject of the White Prince, then you have nothing to fear. We're here just to question you. Um, Great. It's a randomized screening, of course. You know, of course, all the danger and violence that's broken out in the Rim. This... Don't I Don't I know it? I, I've been sailing out on the Outer Rim trying to do some trading, and oh my, it's been hard. Do I get a... Don't you worry, don't you worry at all, man. It's all going to be good. It's just a standard check, and you'll be out of here in no time. Uh, has, like, her information already been taken and, like, written down somewhere that I can, like, pick up and, like, review? Absolutely. There's a chart right there on the table for it. Uh, yeah, I'll you. pick it up and I'll kind of, like, pick it up and I'll, like, gently flip through it and then I'll make, like, curious, like, musing noises, like, hmm, okay, hmm. Mm, what's I your name? It. Uh, this is Ajora. She is the captain of a merchant ship um, based out of the Outer Rim. Good. Yep, I'll uh, I'll start rattling off information and like try- I'm confirming it with her. I'll be like, uh, you are Rajora. Uh, I... This is your profession. Uh huh. Yes, yes, it is. I am. I'm, I'm a. Uh, You're from uh, the outer rim. I am. I, 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 my ship is based out of the Monshare uh, island chain. So uh, far, I think back to my notes. True. Has the Monshare island chain been fucked with by the? Uh, Crimson Fist at this time? There was a small detachment that went missing um, at some point. It's hard to tell if that's the the Crimson Fist or if it's like local Mm -hmm. trouble. Sometimes you gotta put down folks and sometimes boats just sink out on the sea. You know? So there was a group they hopped on a boat they were never seen again. But it is next to the Crab Strait, yeah? Where we have Clear yeah, Fist yeah, there were, yeah, there were a whole bunch of goblins that took over that place, and the Crimson Fists were definitely there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, um, I'll keep that in my mind. Yeah, in your ESP, it, um, Tato McWhiskey is very much sort of like, oh my god, they think I've done something wrong. Oh no, oh my god, I'm in so much trouble. What's going on? Um, I'll like continue I'll... to read the chart. Oh, go ahead. I like. Is she, like, sitting on something? How is she yeah. sitting right now? She's on a chair. A wooden chair. Okay. I'll, like, um, kneel down next to her and put my hand um, on her and be like, it's all good. You're not nervous, are you? It's just a routine check. You're going to be out of here in no time. Don't worry. Okay. You have nothing to fear. Okay. You're loyal to the White Prince, right? You're loyal to us? Of course. I look in her eyes. I... Okay. 
Just breathe calmly. It's all gonna be good. Okay. Okay. Takes a couple breaths. I look back at Sail. I'll uh, <clears throat> say I'll. Let's uh. I suppose let's get the the hard stuff out of the way. Uh, have you ever been a participant in any smuggling operations or criminal activity that involves subverting the White Prince's law with regards to goods and services being supplied without proper taxes being paid? paid? I have not. Um, have you encountered any criminal elements that are subversive with the White Prince's ideals for example the crimson fists and i'll like list off a few like random pirate organizations that kind of operate mm -hmm. uh, as a merchant sometimes we run into people from time to time uh, that seem a little bit sketchy undoubtedly i have run into horrible brigands without knowing it the outer rim is, is filled with treachery uh, but I, I would never knowingly associate with any of those people i'll make like a tutting noise and then, like, start, like, writing something on my notes. What cargo um, did you bring into Port Prince today? Um, today we're bringing in worked wooden uh, goods from, um, from Colrogia and, and Port okay. Augustus. Just keep calm. You know... It'll happen sometimes to some people that you get in with the wrong crowd, you talk to the wrong people, you get caught up in something. Did something like that happen to you? No, never. Absolutely it's, not. Sometimes it's it's not even our fault. We just, you know, you look back and suddenly you realize you've been associating with some strange people wrapped on some strange things and you haven't really been thinking about it. It can really happen to anyone. He looks at the Bishop of Port Prince. And back over to the paladin and back over to the archmage um there I sold some things on Sulphur Island to um, a new group of people who set up there that seemed maybe a little sketchy motherfucker I, but I, I don't really Island. Yeah. Sulphur Island's been abandoned for years a long time. There's people I haven't heard stories from the place in a while. Yeah, I, I, I've been doing my trip around the Outer Rim, you know, keeping as close to these same islands as possible. Don't want to lose sight of land. That's where danger happens. And we saw some smoke rising from the abandoned city and uh, stopped off. And there, there were some people there. There was a small, thriving town. You could, you could see it from the sea. So we, you know, we, we parked by, docked, um, had a little shop going and some small trade. It's not a lot. They seemed pretty legit. Um, but you and know, when did you meet Captain Winners? Excuse me? Who's Captain Winners? Never said she met uh, Captain Winners. I bet she I bet she didn't. I bet is, you don't know who do, that is, right? Do Paladins have like a detect lie thing? And do we know who Captain Winners is at this point? I assume that we've heard of it. Yes, you have. Okay. Um, you can detect... There's a spell detect lie that one of you has. Paladin, you just got like 18 charisma. I don't have. So you can like yeah, read have, yeah. someone's face. Give me, give me a charisma check. Second, I'm gonna pull her up. It's a really 29. good charisma check versus her lying rule. There's clear, like you know, she's throwing all the signs of someone who is yeah. in hot water. Um, and is sort of acting fast. She's got that sketchy vibe around her. The Captain Winner's remark could be truth, could not be truth, but there's def she's definitely not being honest with you, 100%, Paladin. I'll whisper that to the, uh, the cleric. Um, I can tell that she's lying about the winter stuff. I think we might need to go deeper into the spell. Can, can I ask what I've been um, arrested for? Was was there something wrong with my my ledger or my books? Well, I think uh, security is just really tight lately, and so we're checking anyone who 
has a questionable history. Uh, I've been looking over the record of where your ship has been at dock, and I'll like I'm I'm taking my time and I'm like cross referencing where that ship has docked and like mm-hmm. where sightings of the re- uh, crimson fists have been, mm-hmm. and uh, where we spotted on Montcher when she was at Montcher. You killed all the witnesses except for her and her crew. Um, right. There was a, a small village where you were all spotted and hung out and dragged some people into the sea, but that's a small village on the side of the island, and that report has never gotten back to the, the White Prince. So no news of her boat activity has coincided with Crimson Fist activity? Mm-mm. Well, um, okay. no. She's just been a merchant on the Outer Rim. Everything, all the papers are according to plan, um, and she just seems to have been very freely and easily trading up there, which other ships have been doing as well. So uh, my next question is, was there a pattern in her trading activity uh, that was like very regular? And then did that suddenly change at some point in her trading activity? Like, did she did she have like, a, oh, she's going from this island to this island to this island, like as she does this every year. And then at mm-hmm. some point, oh, now she, like, she's always been more of like a take a job as it comes, wherever it takes you sort of person. And so she'll like pick up some cargo and sail somewhere wild and then maybe like do some small trips around the rim until she finds a job that takes her somewhere else. So she's always had irregular activity. But what you do notice is nowhere in her ledger does it say anything about Sulphur Island. There is no, you know, docking information. There's no sign off of a harbor master there. Her ledger never mentions Sulphur Island. Well, there is no harbor master in Sulphur Island, right? That's true. Like no official one. That's true. Yeah. yeah. As I'm looking at those documents, I'll say, well, you have no record here of you docking at Sulphur Island. That would be potentially illegal activity, would it not be? I, I, I there was no harbor master there to take my records. I, but I looked for them. I, I looked for. Um... But you haven't even written it in your own notes that you were there. It's highly suspect in my opinion didn't you find it odd that there was no harbor master there didn't you think to contact your local authority immediately I, I must confess I was I was focused on the work and, and making ends meet for my crew um, and I guess by the time I got to the next island I and, and ran into another harbor master it just slipped my mind I, I to be honest you just it, forgot but now you remember all of a sudden it's coming back to you. I mean, you asked, like that sometimes. Yeah, and, and when you you asked about, you know, strange things, it, it, I remembered that it was strange there. You know, you get used to the, your your customs and, and your activities, and every now and then something slips through the cracks. And she looks at the bishop again, right? Things just sometimes slip through the cracks. Yeah, important things like that sometimes just slip through the cracks. Sometimes you. I guess just forget a little bit about your loyalty to the White Prince, isn't that right? But it's not a loyalty issue. It's uh, just a, you know, sometimes you don't put the keys back on the hook. You, you accidentally drop them on the floor or, you know, you, you put a book yeah. back in the wrong spot. It was There was no malintent, I swear. Our society is built on the rules and protected by the rules that are laid down by the White Prince. His intervention and guidance protects us. You, with your inaction, with your inactivity, and with your slipping of your mind, you could have contributed to the threat in the Outer Rim. What other things have you forgotten? What other rules have you forgotten to follow? Have you not seen what happens when people stray from the White Prince's path? Chaos reigns out there. You know, these people out there, they do horrible things. You've seen it. You've heard the stories, right? People's heads exploding from being punched. Uh, I have. But, you know... You've, you've seen it? No, no, no. I I've heard you. the stories. But you, you know how people talk and make things up. and. But you've that... never seen any of them. You realize lying to us won't get you anywhere, right? We have more spells. We have detect lie. Probably better if you fess up now. I'll like, I'll smirk and like make a laugh and be like, <laughs> I've written down every lie you've told. Um. Don't you want to be a captain again? Don't you want to be free? 
sure she does. How about we redo this conversation? Where did you meet John Winters? The first time. Um. She nervously looks to the all-powerful spellcasters and paladin in front of her. She sees, um, she sees the archmage sort of closing his eyes momentarily as he concentrates on the ESP spell that searches her mind. Um, you know, it's. I hear the the crimson fists have a powerful mage. It, it's possible that uh, my memory's been wiped, and I don't. Maybe that's why I didn't mention the the um, soul for island. Maybe maybe they 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 altered my memory. That's a spell, right? Modified memory. That that's a spell. That's a thing that people do. Out of character, would I know that that's how that spell works, or is there like some inconsistency there with how that spell uh, usually works? Because I would know, right? Right. The person with the modify memory spell here is Potato McWhiskey, the okay. Arc Noster. Um, however, yeah. wait, that's not true. I think I just lied to you. I think you have the modify memory spell. Let me double check. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you have yeah, modify memory. In fact, it's even memorized right now. Uh, so you know nice. that you can eliminate all memory of the event the subject has actually experienced, um, or you can allow them to recall it, uh, an event in detail. You can change the events, or you can implant a memory that never happened. So yeah, that's, okay. that's sort of following. There's a you know duration and a limit on these things, but generally speaking, yeah, that could be true. If someone uh, had a modified memory, could I see that with detect magic? No. No, it's not going to show up with a detect magic spell. Uh, sort of out of character question, could you use modify memory to make someone remember that they confessed <laughs> and then they just continue confessing because they act in that framework? So for example, if Archie used modify, would that be or would that be equivalent to torture where you've essentially extracted information that may or may not be true? You didn't hurt them, right? Torture is about causing suffering. Right. Well, he's saying right, like but... torture will cause answers, but sometimes it's like just not mm, true oh, answers. I see what you're right. saying. Yes. So let's see. Um, modify memory. Oh, dude, what if you like modified memoried her to give her memories of like killing her family, and then you could be like, "Hey, we can get you out of this. It's okay." And all memory of an event the subject's actually experienced. All the subjects recall with perfect clarity. No, 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 no. Change the details of an event the subject has actually experienced. Casting the spell takes a round. If they fail a saving throw, you can proceed with the spell by spending up to five minutes visualizing the memory he wishes to modify in the subject. The caster's concentration is disturbed. The spell is lost. Modified memory will not necessarily affect the subject's actions, particularly if they contradict his natural inclinations. Any illogical modified memory, such as the subject recalling how much he enjoyed drinking poison, will be dismissed by the subject as a bad dream or a memory muddled by too much wine. More useful applications include implanting memories of a friendly encounter with the caster, changing the details of orders given to the subject by a superior, or causing the subject to forget the caster cheated him in a game of cards. Um, so it's going to be pretty subjective based on how you want to do it. If you were to give them the memory of like seeing a, you know, fighting off a red dragon single-handedly, the rest of their life would probably contradict that. Like. They would be more famous if they did that. They would have told that story a bunch. It would be a subject that comes up a lot, but only having that one memory of that red dragon and it like not echoing yeah. through their life might not work. Um, you are free to... You have this person in prison. They're not going anywhere. You can do whatever you want, and you can try things out, and if it doesn't work, you can try something else out. You're the agents of the White Prince on, on the m most important city in the Midlands. And this person might have information you need. This is time to test the limits of your spells. Um, we're going to give you a few minutes to get your story straight. Then we're going to come back here. We're going to give you a do-over. Does that sound good? Um, the previous answers that you gave us, I can see through them. They were obviously lies. Uh, I don't think you're a bad person, so I don't want to send you away to the jails, to the camps. Do we have camps, Foibu? Do we have work camps here? No. You know, if oh. someone... There, there are <sighs> prisons and jails, of course. Um, 
the death penalty is there for people who've done truly atrocious things. Treason? Rarely comes up. Um, but yes, you know, if someone commits a, a true and proper for like pirates, you hang pirates. Or, or maybe you leave them in the stockades for a couple of weeks so everyone can come by and throw shit at them and then you hang them or drown them or something, right? Um, sometimes you can have people work away their sentences, but it's not like a work camp. It's more like you know public service, like go pick up all the trash yeah. in town. Did um, she came on a ship with crew, yeah? She, yes, yes. Uh... uh I'm gonna lie, so I don't know if you want a Christmas check, but um, in well, our you're brief, you're the paladin, right? Yeah. You must follow a code of ethics. Oh, I gotta you be good. Must be oh. a good, honest, righteous paladin of the god of law, the god of order, the god of like really? social society and constructs. So if I say something, it's true. Okay, cool. That's fine. I can I can continue with that. Yeah. Imagine, um, like, being a co the sort of police officer that you want the world to have for police officers. Well, then this cop can't lie to them, right? Yeah, that would probably be antithetical. You you don't need to lie to get what you want. You can find a way yeah. to make the truth work for you. I think that um, we're going to come back in in five to ten minutes. I'm going to send people out for your crew. And I want to have a chat with your first mate. Um, and make sure that your stories line up perfectly. If you're not lying, they will, right? I swear by the White Prince and Lord God Astaire that I would never mislead you knowingly. I nod. Um, I'll call in a guard and I'll ask them to go and uh, fetch me the first mate and to fetch me like a lowly... Uh, Deckhand or something? Deck swapper. Deck swapper. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Does that mean the party's leaving the interrogation room with her for a moment? Is it okay to let her get her story straight for a few minutes? Yeah. Cool. We'll leave for a few minutes. Head back out. Door shuts <sighs> behind her. You head back up to the, the area where you can talk amongst yourselves. The guards are going out to fetch the first mate and one of the deck hands. There's someone who's keeping an eye on them at a, you know, one of your lowly guards has followed them around. You'll find them. They'll be brought back here in no time. Their ship isn't going anywhere. It's been um, chained to the dock, so she can't get off the island one way or the other, and neither can any of them. All right, party. Oh. What are you thinking? What spells did you guys uh, happen upon for today's interrogation? Any others that'll be of assistance? Detect lie, maybe? Well, I hadn't planned on an interrogation this morning, of course, but I did bring we never ESP. Do. <laughs> Uh, clairvoyance, clairaudience, uh, detect magic, and uh, fear. Although, I'm not sure how applicable any or all of those spells could be. With rest, I could potentially be, bring more useful spells. Well, they'll be here as long as we need them. <laughs> so if we need to rest, then you shall rest. Surely um... we couldn't hold her for too long. There are rules around these things. We have a investigative timeline that we'll have to follow. Um... The rules are the rules. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. How long you, do we think we have? You can hold her for 48 hours until you have Perfect. more information. And after that point, if you have probable cause, you can hold her as long as you need. Um, there is no like jury trial. The clerics decide what is right and what is wrong. So if you think that she has committed some crime... Um, you are free to essentially convict her on the spot of such a thing because you're the bishop. You are the the highest authority on the in the Midlands and actually on the Outer Rim. There's only one. But there's one bishop on each of the five islands in the the center ring. One bishop for the White Prince as like his right hand man, and you. You are the bishop for the Midlands and the Outer Ring together. You are an important person in society. You have the judge, jury, and executioner role if you want to hold it. Um, yeah. So there's no, like, real court system. It's just kind of whatever the person wants. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 
whoever has but authority. But the bishops are meant to be good and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And sort Makes of, sense. you know, nobles also have the same authority. If a noble accuses, thinks that you've done something, a noble of appropriate rank, um, they can, you know, just sentence you to jail. There's, we don't have trials in the way that we do in the modern world. There's, there's no organization for that. You just, someone in charge who does the right thing and they have the authority to do whatever you want. And my assumption is then like an appeals process would be based on how powerful the person that has been captured. Yes. So like, if you're imprisoning a peasant, who the fuck cares? But if you right. imprison like a noble who has a father who's powerful, he's going to be like, mm -mm, you need to like show proof about my son. I'm going to go to my own people. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. Um, um, okay, we'll bring the deck swabber and the first mate. Yeah. Uh, they come on by. They get dragged in by one of your guards who snaps you a stiff salute and says, uh, All have praised the White Prince. We found these ruffians uh, in a tavern, drinking away their troubles. First mate here, and he roughly brings in the first mate. Hasn't said a lick since we've arrested him. And he grabs, you know, that, someone like, else grabs kinda, a deck swallow. You know, like, uh, when he, like, roughly pushes the first mate, like, I'll grab him and I'll, like, set him straight and, like, make sure they're Mm -hmm. Holders are good. Uh, now, guard, we don't we don't treat our prisoners like savages. <clears throat> uh, am, I, am I understood? Yes, my lord. I apologize. And he looks to the prisoner. I apologize for treating you roughly. It's not the way of the right prince. I shall we'll self-flagellate immediately. Yes. Please. Steps back out and grabs the, the thing and starts whipping himself on the back a few times. Ten times for the, the crime of being too rough. <laughs> Proceeds with his day. Good. Um, oh, dearie. I'm s I hope that they weren't too rough with you. Are you okay? Fine. Fine. Not a big deal. Good. We just uh, had a few questions for you. Uh, your captain called you as a character witness, and we just wanted to make sure that you're... Wait, I can't lie. <coughs> uh, we just had a few questions for you. We wanted to make sure that, uh, that your story lines up with what your captain's saying. Everything should be fine, and you should be free to go in more than five minutes. No Is captain a drawer minutes. okay? Oh, Absolutely. Your captain will be unharmed. Okay. You want to get to it? Of course. Um, I'll, I'll point to a room and uh, motion them to follow. Now, are you bringing them all the way down to the dungeons, or are you, like, staying up in the, like, upper offices area? The upper offices is fine, but if anyone else has any other thing, then... What do you guys think? Upper offices, or do you want to go to the dungeons? Upper offices feels more comfortable and as if they are not yeah. in trouble yet. And so they yeah. may be more willing to like, oh, we're not on our guard here. They're just like checking up on us. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You bring I'll them have just the into... deckhand brought. I'll whisper to guard. Bring the deckhand to the lower levels. Guard nods. Um, holds the deckhand until you're out of sight and then we'll take them down to the lower levels. You can uh, interrogate the, the first mate over here in the offices. It's a nice day in the Midlands. The sun is shining. It's winter, but it's still nice and warm out, you know. Um, there's a windows propped open in this room, allowing a breeze through from the outside. You can hear the sounds of town beyond. The first mate doesn't seem too concerned, but then realizing that that's actually the Inquisitor who's no longer at the docks and is here in this room with me. And that looks like some wizard, but I don't recognize their face of them. And that person's got the hat of a bishop, so they're definitely important. Begins to sort of like... A little more serious as they realize the the situation before them the person you're interrogating the first mate is like a you know broad shoulders strapping young man with like tight muscles and a just a very loose tank top style shirt and some loose pants on with sandals a couple of bronze bracers on the sides you know to show off some wealth and power and look kind of tough and be fashionable um a bronze necklace but otherwise fairly modest in means Uh, how how can I help you? I've got a few questions for you. How long have you been with um sorry, what is your ship's name? Uh, Captain Ajora? Or Yeah, or what the... do you call your ship? Uh we call it the Is it the Forbidden Fruit? It was something like that. The Forbidden Fruit is the one that you guys captured. I actually can't find the name of her ship. I've been looking for oh, it while you've been talking. Uh... The, I don't think we ever named it. No, we must have. Must have. It had a name. I have like she had Scarlet, Miley, and Emma on her crew. 
I don't remember. I didn't write down her name, the boat the name of her boat. Um, uh, I have the Merchant Ajora on my mm -hmm. shitty notes. The Golden Light is Brophy's ship. And then I don't have the Forbidden Fruit anymore. But, yeah, if you can't find it, it's fine. Uh, my notes just keep referring it to as her ship. That makes sense. Um, we're going to name it then. It's going to be called um, the Apogea. The Apogea. Yeah. How long have you been a member of the Apogea? Ooh, six years now is uh, when I signed up. You signed up as a deckhand or first mate? How did you get on? Well, I was a deckhand and a able-bodied seaman on another ship for a while. Uh, but eventually, you know, social situations that the ship wasn't heading in the same direction that I wanted. Um, so I retired from that one and did a little bit of dock work for a bit. Um, bumped into Captain Ajora. And, um, you know, chatted, hit it off. We seemed to have the same mind about how to go about things, uh, how, to, how to, you know, what sort of jobs we wanted, the lifestyle that we wanted to lead. She had a ship, um, was looking for a new first mate and some extra crew. So uh, I joined on up, been a loyal member of, of <clears throat> the Apogea and the Dardens ever since. Honorable. Understand. I'm sure Captain Jor would speak highly of you. I Do you certainly think? hope so. I think I've uh, what has been your um, what has been your main trade on the Ajora? What do you guys sell usually? Well, we mostly haul cargo from one place to the other. Occasionally, if we find a good deal, and Captain Jora has the free money, she'll personally purchase supplies, uh, you know, things, um, and see if she can't sell them at a higher markup somewhere else. But Mostly we do cargo and transport, uh, a lot less risk. Uh, we are bonded with the, um, the the Outer Rim Insurance Agency, so you know that our you know we'll, we'll always pay our debts, and if um, you know we're not going to take anything or, or disappear with any of it. And I, I think the bonds are all up to date, and I think all, all the finances have been taken care of. Well, isn't that wonderful? Um, Captain Ajora was saying something about the Monchere re region. Would you, uh, please explain that voyage? M Monchere? She was informing us. Correct. Right. She was informing us about what happened of, uh, at Monchere, and I wanted to get another, uh, opinion. Well, we passed through Monchere, um, a few times... Uh, one of the time, the, the visit. Well, there was one um, time. I'll pull out like a notebook and like scribble with like a quill and pen. Um, what did Captain Wait. Jora say happened? Are there rights that we need to inform people of here, or no? No. No. <laughs> um. Uh, Captain Ajora gave us a story. However, uh, we're cross-referencing to make sure that. You both give the same story. You understand how these investigations work, right? I'll kind of kick it back in the chair. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, we hear a lot of stories here. A lot of things happen. And her story just happened to be so unbelievable to me that um, I, I just needed to make sure that another crew member could vouch. Uh, we need to get to it right away if it's true. I don't know what you're talking about. T to be honest, uh, I, I would wouldn't normally say this in front of a, a, a bishop or a, a paladin, but um, you know, sailors, some of us have a bit of a drinking problem. There is a really good winemaker in, in Monchere. Every time we go through, the first thing I do is hit the bottles. Um, everything around Monchere is always a little blurry because a uh, little... Because I'm a sinner and I spend too much time with the bottle and... Um, it's all just sort of, a uh, fuzzy. I see. Um... A stair punished <sighs> me for my, my lack of self-control. So you don't remember what happened on Mount Cher at all? Um, we picked you up some cargo? You know the penalty cargo? for lying to a 
cleric to a <laughs> wizard <laughs> to a paladin of t I, uh, I I don't remember. Okay, well then you must remember what happened on um, Sulphur Island. What the car what the cargo was? We've been to Sulphur Island, but you know, just moving boxes, right? I don't I don't know what's in the boxes. It's it's easier that way um, to just move things rather than buy and sell things. Nobody talked about what's in the boxes. And did you meet anyone on that island? Who has a name that would be memorable? I find it oh. startling and unbelievable if the first mate of a ship didn't meet a single person on that island that they could name. Uh, yeah. You had I your bet. eyes open, right? Of course. I mean, around. yeah, that's... It was a, you know, I, I remember the smell. Um, mm -hmm. I remember all the buildings were pretty broken down. The whole place looked dilapidated and fallen apart. Uh, mm -hmm. There wasn't a harbor master, and there was some guy there named John that was in charge. Ah, John who? I have his name right here, but do you remember his last name? Brophy or Brophy or Brophidius? Um, a noble? Bro yeah, I don't think so. He didn't act like a noble. Merchant of some kind? I, th I think uh, maybe I he took the down. boxes. Oh, so you were delivering the boxes to John then? Well, you know, Captain what, says jump. Your shipping yeah, manifest should have this. Yes, you were there to deliver something, right? Uh, I'm sure he manifest. recorded everything, and it's all in order. Oh, uh, the yeah, captain we'll records the, the manifest. I I'm just the the first mate, you know. You don't sure. have mm -hmm. any uh, any insight into the bookkeeping of your ship at all. I mean, I'm sure, the... I'm, I know, as a first mate, you're busy always, but, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, Your Grace, I didn't catch that. Any insight into what? One second, sir. Uh, any insight into the uh, bookkeeping? Oh, the bookkeeping. Um. Well, captain, I, I get the captain's books for her, um, but she Thank she's you. very insistent on managing them herself. She says it, it's a protocol for the captain to keep all of the books in order and um, it would be inappropriate for um, the first mate to try and adjust anything. Do we have her books? I assume they would yes. be on the captain when they came. Uh, yeah, I'll when you through. come off the island, you, you know, present your, your ledger and your logs um, for inspection. I, I do what have an there? out of character question. Mm -hmm. um, is there like a, I don't know what the word you would use is, but like a, a ban on settling on certain islands around the rim for example sulfur island are these islands like not unholy but you know what i'm saying like they're no whatever there's... unsanctioned you can't go there no 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 um there there's just people don't go there because there's no reason to the white prince generally is sort of hoping people will populate the islands and spread out a little bit more and like further settle everything uh but you know that place was overrun with undead. And you yeah. would know that as a cleric and as a paladin and as an archmage. You would know that there what were a whole bunch of undead cruising around on that island from when it was overthrown 80-some years ago. What do we think about the undead? Well, they are the loyal, faithful people who have given their undying pledge to serve the White Prince in this life and beyond. They are like the, the pinnacle of virtue and honor. People giving up their afterlife to serve, continue make the world a better place. They're true so they're heroes. Like volunteer immortal soldiers. Yes. Yep. Right. They're it's a bit good, grim, but all right. Good people. Really different. Um. Well, we know about it. They've been there. Uh. The average person knows about the Oath Sworn, yes? Yeah, people know about it, but no one likes to talk about it. It's one of those, like... Okay, you know. so we wouldn't talk about it. I, yeah, it's just, you know how sometimes in society there's a thing that everybody is aware of, but is just, yeah. like, an uncomfortable <sighs> thing to bring up, and so no. people don't? It's one yeah. of those things. Everyone yeah. knows about the Oath Sworn, but in polite society, you don't mention it. It might come up in, like, soldier talk, and like the high ranking levels of a stair folks, your circles, your social circles might talk about the oath sworn, but the small folk, no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
We were just talking to him. Oh, I'll flip through the through the logs. Is there a scheduled delivery supposed to be at um, Sulphur Island? Um, who scheduled their scheduled delivery? Yeah, it sounds like so. Uh, he was saying, well, we have boxes and we were delivering them to John. Uh -huh. There should be something in the logs then saying like who ordered the delivery, um, who right. got the delivery on Sulphur yeah, Island and absolutely. stuff like that. Absolutely. Yes, there should be some sort of log of that. But if you flip through the ledgers, there's no log of any deliveries to Sulphur Nothing. Island. It's just conveniently missing everywhere. And if you wanted to pour through the logs to see if there was a record of something being picked up without being dropped off, you could. But that would take you like a day or two to, you know, catalog everything yeah. appropriately. Um, yeah, I'll just kind of point through it. You said you had a delivery for Mr. Brophy. Yes? Boxes. You don't know what's in them. Yep. Yeah, uh, there was a delivery to the island, and, and he took it. So I assume so. I will pull the logs. I'll turn it around, and I'll... You can read? Yes? Uh-huh. Of course. I'll push it towards him and have him read uh, that area <clears throat> and discover himself that there is nothing. He already probably knows that. Yeah, he knows. Um, well, this is unusual, I suppose. I, 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 don't, I don't really know. Hmm. So your commander just made a mistake. After Beyond all Beyond my the... pay grade, sir. Beyond my pay grade. Ma'am. Ma'am, ma I'm so sorry, ma'am. I am ma madam. Madam La Lady Grammy <laughs> Goldman, I'm so sorry. Ma'am. Oh my god. I am I, offended. I thought, um, I thought office I didn't I didn't know. Goodness. Okay. Um well you've been most unhelpful. I think that we're gonna need to take this uh well, do either of you have any questions? I'll look to my colleagues. I'll uh I'll think for a moment. And I'll kinda like stroke my chin sleep. No, I believe I believe the questions I have have already been answered by his silence. Over his heart, uh, all, all hail the White Prince. Does he look scared? He looks oh, deeply intimidated, but you're used to that. I mean, look at you. You're Lady I'm Goldmane. A you're a paladin. This is the Bishop of Port Prince. This is an eighth level clerical spellcaster, one of the seven highest ranking spellcasters in the land, the White Prince himself excluded. And over here is the Archmage himself, you know, the, the most important wizard here. Big area. How could you not be intimidated in your presence? I think we're going to take you down to the uh, <clears throat> to the dungeons to uh, await uh, our investigation. We will not hold you for anything more than Oh, I don't know. 48 hours? As his highness wills it. He does. Yes, and if you're a loyal servant of the White Prince, we do apologize for the inconvenience. I understand. Yeah. There there are dangerous things that need to be taken care of. Anything I can do to help would be my honor. You're soon. Uh, I will just take him off at down that point. He yep. Yeah, down he goes. And I think this is a spot for our first break. When we come back on the other side, our party will oh, see what's up with these characters. See you soon. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tides of Death. It's a beautiful day in Port Prince, and it's a beautiful day to serve the White Prince. You've got these... Ne'er do wells who were foolish enough to walk near our mighty inquisitor, our mighty paladin who could just smell the crime on them. Ugh, what a good day it is to serve the light of the Lord. Ah, so before we get too deep into this investigation, what does it feel like to be an inquisitor of the White Prince who might have found out something about these damn dirty, filthy pirates? Feels good. We're doing the Lord's work. We're bringing uh, law and order back to the realm. Mm. Um, if anything, we've been pr I've been probably self-flagellating mm. myself for what happened on the Outer Rim, you mm. know? Mm. Shit's gotten too bad. 
around mm. here. Mm. If only as an inquisitor you could rule, you know, serve the outer rim instead of just Port Prince. Ah, but your mm-hmm. duties and your oath keep you here. What a tragedy. It's disgusting. You could just be set free. You could bring these evildoers down yourself. Single handedly. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And we're going to go over to the cleric next. Not any cleric, the bishop. Eighth level mm-hmm. cleric of Astaire, empowered with all sorts of spells. You're in charge of all of this stuff. And you know, there's been this trouble on the Outer Rim, but it hasn't really hit Port Prince yet. And yet, and yet, you're sort of semi-responsible for the Outer Rim as the, you know, the only bishop not within the inner circle. How have you been feeling about having, you know, the Outer Rim falling apart on you? It feels, it feels bad. It feels like we're losing control, which is to a bishop like this, probably the, like, things getting out of order seems like Mm. the worst possible thing to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Um... I think I think mostly I'm worried about the people that I'm responsible for, um, and the havoc that's being wreaked on them. And I hope that I can bring them back to safety soon and bring order back. Ah, oh, excellent. Um, and mage, you have a, a slightly different position in all of this. The mages of the White Prince are taught very specific spells in a very specific slow rote way so that everybody can have more or less the same spell book, the spells that are useful to the White Prince. And while the cleric over there gets a medallion of ESP and the, the um, uh, paladin gets like a long sword and a magic helm, you are denied any magic equipment and your spells that you must learn are handpicked for you in your servitude. Um, there's always been like a class difference where the clerics absolutely need the mages because the mages have particular spells that are important to have um, and but the mages are sort of like restrained in their power and sort of like kept in a little bit of confinement else they get out of hand um, how, and yet you've risen to the rank of archmage you've risen to the, the highest rank of cl- uh, wizard available in these lands so what it, what is it like for you, all these other things aside, being one of the most powerful wizards in the land and yet always contained by the faith? So I've actually thought about this a little bit. There's two ways I can think of this. And I think for you to become an archmage, you have to think one particular way. And that is you have to be bought in. You have to be bought in. Um, the confinement is justified look at this heretic spellcaster this wanton destruction mage running rampant with spells that are unsanctioned unsanctioned magic you know rumors of fog cloud of entire villages being wiped into the sea all this sort of stuff this is exactly why i am limited and it's exactly why i'm here is to act in the favor of the white prince to bring unruly wizards to heal with the assistance of clerics and inquisitors. Now, I might feel the constraint heavily upon me, but I truly believe that based on what's been going on in the Outer Rim, that it is the right decision. Mm -hmm. That it is important to limit me because where wizards like me limited or unlimited, this is what you see. You see disorder and chaos. Yeah. And so, in that case, um, is this how, how are you feeling about these these prisoners that you've got? Um, right now, I'm not particularly feeling like there's much deeper to this. I'm just pressing and trying and and um, you know putting the pressure on, but I don't think I particularly have an inclination that they are caught up in anything bigger. You know, there's nothing, okay. they're just, they're probably smugglers, you know, their stories kind of line up, but they're not, they're not, not a big deal. Gotcha. They're gotcha. probably worth arresting and figuring out, and maybe they'll have a bit of information on some pirates that are operating or a smuggling town right. or whatever, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Great. Well, let's come back into game then as um, you've got this situation. So uh, explain what what's going on next, and then we'll get to it. I have, uh, well, 
Our plan was to get the two, the first mate and Ajora into the same room, and then I would use Claire audience to listen to any potential conversation that they would have. However, I do have a couple of questions. First one is, yeah. how many resources would I be given as an arch wizard, like discretionary spending? Because like, Claire audience is like a hundred gold spell. So like, how much of a budget do I have? And then, ah. how more willing would I be to spend that budget in the light of this crisis? Right. So you have a very large budget to do these things. Claire Audience is an expensive spell and it takes a lot of gold that has to be wound into this perfect cone and all that jazz. So it's not a spell that you're likely to use unless you think it is important to further the ends. Um, I guess in this moment, you get to decide whether the Archmage of Port Prince is a um, quick and easy spender or if he is more of a diligent man who keeps a tight budget. Um, And that's gonna be in your ballpark, but you don't answer to anyone about spending. You can justify any expense anytime you want. You're in charge. And that's how it should be, Koibu. You know, unless the bishop tells you you're spending too much money. Yeah, I think I would have a discussion, then I think how I would feel is I would have a discussion with the bishop about how we would want to proceed, which magical spells we would want to use, uh, and would we like to be uh, cost efficient like zone of truth I think that might be an expensive spell so perhaps we would be better to attempt clear audience and save you know the coffers of a stair you know there's a, a limited amount of gold to go around I'm gonna be honest I didn't even know they had clear audience so I think that the average person wouldn't know but I have no idea mm-hmm. um, we'll have the guards so, yeah. keep in separate rooms while we discuss this obviously we don't want to miss the the moment that they get to talk to each other again I will, uh, I'll, I'll start the conversation off. I'll say, well, they are definitely suspicious, but I am not detecting anything that is sending off, you know, conspiracy alarms or anything worthy of deeper investigation. Um, however, uh, it is probably best that we do get to the bottom of this. So how do you guys think we should proceed? Uh, I think we should use the clear audience. I think it's better yeah. to find the answer out um, easy way. They'll probably talk to each other and uh, <clears throat> they'll try and get their story straight. The bare minimum, we'll see if there's something that they're trying to conceal. The more we let them alone, the more we let them talk, the more we find out how malicious their intentions truly are. They I'll also like think we're probably busy dealing with the uh, deck swabber anyways, so their guards will be down. I like nod and stroke my beard, and in this time of crisis, we can never be too careful. Every root must be pulled until the tree is felled. And uh, then I will set up the guards to go do that. I will um, tell them to put them in the same cell so that they can visit with each other, blah, blah, blah. And then I will prepare the spell clear audience to listen in on that potential meeting. And I'll try to make it so that the guards kind of go on their lunch break at the same time, so they don't feel like there's anyone outside the cell either listening. Mm. Very wise. Like maybe, maybe they're maybe they're given lunch. They're they're at lunch, right? So they're eating together, and the guards are like in the room, but they're like across the room, so they can maybe have a whispered conversation. That's kind of the setup I'm looking for. Yeah, gotcha. Very wise. Okay. Well, easy to set up. The guards follow your instructions um, to the letter. If they don't. There's a spell that one of you has. I do believe it is actually you called Compulsive Order, Bishop of Astaire. This is perhaps your most fearsome spell of all. This is the spell you can use on agents of the state who maybe aren't holding up their end of the bargain or maybe are a little bit lax. It's a permanent spell that infuses them with being like OCD orderly to the point that it will destroy or dis- ma- uh, majorly disturb their life. If they're going to like eat food, they have to decide the order in which they eat the food. Maybe hardest to softest, driest to wettest, biggest to smallest. Maybe you go like grains, vegetables, meats, some aura, but like everything must be in a tight order and you know, must be um, completely defined. So if you're counting coins, you'll pile them all up in stacks of 10 by color and blah, 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 blah. Um, this is your my agents aren't working right and we need them to behave appropriately thing. And it is a fearsome indeed. 
everyone wants to do the right thing else else they be compelled to do it against their will uh and so yeah they follow your orders and uh soon the dungeons are quiet except for the guards having dinner or lunch or whatever and i believe that uh we bring them together and we do clear audience mm -hmm. yeah and jails castle jails yes so you bring them together and um our wizard will clear audience in so you will hear this on your own mr wizard yeah and it's eight rounds of listening so pretty soon as you um clear audience in to it well actually let me rephrase you know when the guards will go down and move them you've got eight minutes that you can listen in do you want to listen to the first eight minutes do you want to wait five minutes and then listen to the the next eight um what what's the timing of your spell well i think the basic idea was this is like a lunch so they're only going to get like 10 minutes to eat mm -hmm. so i might miss like them getting being brought into the room and then been them being t taken out so i might like wait a minute and then in, like the second i think they're sat got down it. i'll clear audience in got it all right so with the 10 minute lunch, you can listen to the whole thing, essentially. And it goes pretty quickly. Um, Captain Ajora and the first mate. First name for the first mate? I don't think so. No, first but the mate. names of the people on the crew was Scarly, Myla, Miley, and Emma. Emmet. Emma. Scarlet, Miley, and Emma. I like fucked up every single one of those names. Nice. <laughs> Uh, well, then this is Scarlet. Scarlet and Ajora are sitting down in their cell. And Ajora, uh, you, you can't see what's happening, but you can hear the like rustling of chains and clothes as they scoot closer to each other on the bench. <clears throat> and Ajora saying, what, what, what are you doing here? What did you tell them? And Scarlet saying, look, boss, I don't know what's going on. They started asking me questions. And they started asking about Sulphur Island, and they started asking, <clears throat> well, they, you know, they started asking about that, you know, happened on, on Monsieur, and um, I, I tried to, you know, I tried to, 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 they knew too much. They already knew where we were, and our door was like, yeah, 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 I know, I know, we're in some hot shit here. All right, we gotta get our plan straight. Um, I've already told them we've been Sulphur Island, and. Scarlet chimes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They knew that. They asked me about it. I, I told them that we dropped off a box there for John Brophy. And Ajora says, damn it. Well, we didn't, I didn't remember much about that time. That's okay. That's okay. I'm the captain. My memory was altered. You're just the first mate. No one would alter your memory. Your memory was altered? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I told them. I told them that my memory was altered. Maybe. I don't know. Look, we're in some hot shit here. How the fuck did we get out of this prison? No, no one gets out of these. Come on. Think. Did you see what that was? That was a bishop? And a, and a paladin at the same time. The other person, uh, Scarlet, pauses. What do you think Nilrum's gonna do when he finds out that we've been captured? And Ajora says, well, he threatened to kill all of our families, um, hunt them down and murder them, so we shouldn't get caught. Scarlet says, um, I hate to tell you, Captain, but we're in the dungeons, and we're already caught. So, Zora says, okay. Well, if they find out the truth, I don't know if we're going to be traitors or pirates or what. So we've got two options as I see it. Um, one we just fold and tell them everything that we know and throw ourselves on the mercy of the court and uh, beg for their forgiveness and go really far out of our way to help them. I mean, we didn't volunteer for this position. We were kind of foisted into it, you know? Uh, and Scarlet says, yeah, Captain, we could do that, but White Prince isn't really known to be a forgiving man and I don't know how much they're going to help us. They'll, they'll forgive us. Well, we, we do know a lot about the Crimson Fists, you know, we, we actually know quite a bit about them. Um, maybe maybe that knowledge is worth something, you know? 
Maybe maybe we can bargain for at least for our lives with it. We'll definitely never sail again, but maybe we won't spend the rest of our lives rotting in a prison or hanging by a rope. Carol says, well, okay, but you said there was a second option. What, what's the second option, Captain? Jora says, well, second option is um, we find a way to kill ourselves so that our families don't get murdered. I don't really like that option, Captain. Yeah. One of us could do the other, but the remaining person? I don't know how that's going to work. But I think we're going to get caught. Uh, Captain, I don't like this way that this is going. I told you we shouldn't have come to Port Prince. We have to come to Port Prince. It, I mean, come on. Think of a way to kill me if I kill you first? I don't really feel like killing you, Captain. I, I think we should just tell him everything. Do you have much family, Scarlet? Once Nilrum finds out that you were working with the White Prince, well, what, what if we beg to get our families, you know, taken off the Outer Rim first? You know, maybe maybe that's how we could bargain. We say we know stuff, but, but we need our families free before we can tell them anything. You're really going to tell the White Prince you have knowledge about the Crimson Fist, but you have to wait to tell them? How do you think that's going to go? I don't... Beyond my pay grade? Well, I don't think we have much choice here. That's a quiz an inquisitor and a bishop and an archmage. There's a moment of awkward, uncomfortable silence in the jail cells. And eventually, Scarlet speaks up and says, yeah, my, I think I got him on the ropes. I think I, I think I can do it. You know what? What about the, what if we just bite our tongues off? Then we can't talk. Um, maybe. Can't they read minds? Oh well, yeah, they. But how much? What if I just keep singing a, a really annoying song in my head and I never stop and my tongue's cut out? Like, won't that drive them as mad as it'll drive me? Along is the wizard like informing more? of us of this? Is like, is it happening or no? Yes, I would almost certainly be like relaying, like I wouldn't be like repeating everything they're saying, but I would be saying like. Sure, but like they're talking they, about biting their tongues off. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, then the paladin is going to go down there and, uh, you know, probably have a talk with them, um, chain them up, make sure they can't hurt themselves, and uh, let them know that the jig is up and we know everything, and we can help them. Okay. You can head down the stairs. Um, they'll hear the jail cells opening, or the cells uh, opening, the boots on the not floor. Not slowly. This would be probably, like, quickly. Right. Yeah, so they'll hear the... they were the... talking about killing each other, then now they're talking about... Yeah. Yeah, they'll hear the cell open at the top of the stairs, and the quick, um, you know, steel boots of the paladin coming down the stairs, and they'll shut the fuck up real fast as the paladin grabs the keys from the guards who are having lunch down the hallway and uh, opens the cell chains them to the wall so they can't use their hands for anything. You can't ever stop them from biting their tongues off unless you like... No, I can't. You no. know, um, put a leather strap... I, I'm not going to chain them to the walls as long as I'm okay. here, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to... We heard everything you were saying through our... wizard's magic. And I want you to know that um, we feel for you and we can help your families. But you're going to need to work with us. Uh, in all ways. They look at you. What, what do you, What do you mean? Says Scarlet. I'll I'll recount like a little bit of the conversation. Um, I decided to come down here when I heard that you were considering to bite your tongues off. Jora kicks Scarlet. I told you they had strong magics. Well, you you got us. Yeah, we we. I I know Captain John personally, but my family. You you need to save my family before. Before Nil, oh my God, you you can't imagine the horrors of Nilrum the, the Maleficent. I've heard of him. I thought it was Nilrum the. Uh, fuck. What was the other word? Not the Maleficent, but the malev uh, malevolent. Malevolent. The, the bloodthirsty. Yeah. The, the, the 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 violence incarnate. Uh, yeah, oh I thought that he was called Nilrum the Magnificent. <laughs> she shudders. He looked into that man's eyes. 
you'd know there's nothing magnificent about him. I, I assume me and Archie, or me and Archie, me and the bishop are in the room. <laughs> yeah, you can come down in, no problem. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, um, <clears throat> what can we do for them? Can we remove their families from the outer rim? In order for, uh, in exchange? I don't know. What do you think? They go about their business and they work for us? I'll kind of like think deeply for a moment and say, Yeah, me too. It's a delicate business. These people have obviously worked against the White Prince, but it does not seem like they did it of their own free will. They did not choose to disobey. And if you do not choose to disobey a rule, have you really broken it? I don't think they had a choice. We didn't. Seems like they were Scarlet breaking down pretty quickly. We didn't. Oh my God! They threatened us with all sorts of things. They slaughtered an entire contingent of of guardians and a, and a cleric right before our eyes. They set fire to. They were they were on the badlands in the middle of in the middle of Moncher. They're monsters. You have no idea the things that they've done. There's some dark thing that they worship that comes out of the ocean and drags people into their depths. It's a horrible, horrible fate. Please get us Does out this of this. Key into me as a paladin at all. Have you ever heard anything about this? Um dark things in the oceans dragging people to their deaths is an old sailor's tale you know and yeah. there was that dragon around for and there's always bullshit on the seas yeah yeah, yeah. i just put a, my uh, hand on I, I just put my hand on their shoulder Shh, it's okay you're getting hysterical stay with us do i know about the dragon that's uh on the loose now or no yes yes ever yes you are absolutely keenly aware of the return of telemachy who was impressed upon you these last winter festivals there is a plan the White Prince has. You don't know it yet. He hasn't told the bishops yeah. or anyone else, but there is a plan to deal with the dragon, and there is a plan to deal with the Crimson Fists. You know the Crimson Fist plan, but we'll talk about that later. Unless it's important now. Um, I think it might be important now, depending on how we're going to have these people work for us. Yeah, we're going to take the HMS Lawbringer and the HMS Thunder Toss, and one of them's going to park at an island on the Outer Rim, and the other's going to go with the current and search island by island until we find them and kill them. Or, you know, actually arrest them if possible and drag them into prisons. But it'll be great, and um, they won't be able to escape because we'll have all the islands locked down, and we'll just take our time and go nice and slowly and search each and every island. And um, it might take, you know, 120 days. might take a year to search the Outer Rim because there's a lot of islands, a lot of places to hide. Uh, but there ain't nowhere that they're going to go, and eventually we'll search them all. Um, how do you think they could be of use? Well, I would estimate that the best course of action would be to attempt to bring their families from the outer rim into the central rim, take their testimony, any information they have on the Crimson Fists and the Dark Heretic, and of course, Nirum, the Maleficent, whatever they call him. Information is their most useful commodity for us. And in exchange, we will protect their families. And if they ever make it back, once their families are safe, their lives will be safe as well. I think I'd have to double check the laws to see what the precedent is here. And I might even have to write to the prince himself or have an audience. But this you know, seems within our power and of a reasonable course of action. I can't get it out of my head what they said about the dark creature that they worship. I mean, I know there's tales about this all over the Ardennes, but... Did you see their eyes when they said that? They were terrified. Probably talking about the Telemachy who's been released recently. Or some sort yeah. of magic. I have a spell. Is this uh, in front of them, or is this you know, to the side, away from them? In front this of them, from moved at all. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I would not be saying this in front of them. Yeah, okay. So you've stepped away. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'll, I'll describe the spell that I have, Everard's Black Tentacles, and I'll say they're probably just thinking of some sort of advanced magic. Mm. That makes sense. Mm. 
it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bringing in their family seems like the right course of action here. It'd be pretty easy for us. Yeah. Um, the biggest danger... Well, do we just detain them here forever now that we have proof? Do we let them go back out to operate as double agents while we save their families? Or The worry is that... Mm, I don't know. We know. I don't know what know the correct course of action is. Do we know that clerics are looking for Nilrum as well? Mm -mm. Um, no. Okay, hold on. Because Ajora uh, was the person who set him on the on the way. There, yes, there has been an emissary from some people afar. You didn't hear it yourself. It was a footnote in a meeting that there are some clerics who are searching for a man named Nilrum. But you don't have. Uh, yeah, actually, that would be connected. Um, there are some clerics out there from faraway lands that are looking for these pirates as well. But it's just noted as, like, they're wanted in other places and there are other people looking to bring them to justice. But that's pretty much all you would have heard. Sorry. Would I be interested enough to ask about it here or no? Um, To whom or what? I don't understand. Um, Just, like, would that come in my mind to ask, like, have you heard about... Are the clerics looking for the same man that you talk of, the Nilrum person? Mm, yeah, yeah. What are that's, they looking that's for? That's reasonable. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll recant that then. Dora will shake her head. I, I, I too have heard rumors of these clerics. I've found their wanted posters. I brought them to to Sulphur Island, which is the the, the sanctuary for for the Crimson Fists. Um, but I don't know what the clerics want. I just know that they've been searching for them. Last I heard, so the you clerics have a way, were in the inner ring. You have a way in to their sanctuary without alerting any of them, yes? They know my face. What if we send a detachment for recompense? We send a detachment of our soldiers and me. Maybe even I'll point to the arch wizard with me. And we set up a trap. The Crimson Fist will come back, yes? To Sulphur Island? Hang on. Yeah, they, they've left a whole bunch of people. They've made an isla, a base there. They've got some people in charge. But they themselves always, you know, they they come back. And then they go away and they, they, they loot and pillage. And then they come back. Um, I don't know when. It could be a while. Then it probably couldn't be us. We're stationed here. But I'm sure we could send a strong detachment um, of soldiers. Maybe even lower... Uh, People, I look to the Baron. Would that be suitable? To the Baron? Bishop. Did you say Bishop? Uh, the Bishop, yeah, sorry. See you, Archie. Do you Pokemon sorry, terms? I was yeah, yeah. Omega so now. Can you repeat that last sentence, please? Um, I am suggesting a detachment of soldiers under a Jorah's uh -huh. ship to go uh -huh. to... Um, uh, Sulphur Island and wait for them yeah. and do like an ambush. I think that's our best end um, to catch them. I think we should do it. Now, the White Prince already does have a plan to search all the islands for the Crimson Fists themselves. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to send a detachment to conquer Sulphur Island, do you need to get permission to do this? Does this interfere with the yeah. White Prince's plan? I think I, I think this is getting to a point. Yeah, I think it's getting to a point where we have enough information, enough concrete stuff, and enough new information that we should probably get the White Prince involved. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Uh, gonna... How do we contact the White Prince? Uh, uh, well, probably through me somehow, right? Yeah. There's a combination of ways. The you could just sail to his island yourself, um, or you could use reflecting pool with project self to have your wizard show up um, in you know in an appropriate place and deliver a message in like in um, in incorporeal form. Um, I should probably I think, do that. I, I don't the, think we. The, I don't think this this is like MS, important enough to like show up in person. The MS yeah. Lawbringer is already on its way. It hasn't chosen an island yet. I think that that should be stationed at Sulphur Island, if it's their home base. 
the other mm -hmm. ship can chase them around the uh, outer the outer rim. Mm -hmm. But we will cut off at least their uh, home base completely from them and support. And uh, mm -hmm. we should probably deal with anyone who's uh, on Sulphur Island then as criminals. Mm -hmm. These are all of good course ideas. it's up to the white prince yeah so that's the that's your recommendation to the white prince is use sulfur island as the main staging ground where the thunder toss will stay while the lawbringer searches the rest of the islands one by one yeah and what is to become of these traitors these people who work with pirates who have by their own admission been on their own, on their own ship, away from the pirates and out of the threat of danger and continued to voluntarily work with them the entire time. They could have come and picked up their own families when the pirates weren't around and just sailed them to the Midlands and confessed all their crimes. And they didn't. They chose willingly to hang out on the Outer Rim and profit from the chaos. And yet, and yet, it is also your, they are your most powerful weapon or your greatest tool leading you to the Crimson Fists. What is to be done with these unlawful people? I'll make I... the argument that they are like the children that are uh, sanctioned wizards. They are dangerous and unruly and yet youthful. Hmm. I think that, um we give them a way to contact us and we let them go and they report on all of their dealings with the Crimson Fist from now on directly to one of us. Um, it'll help us keep tabs. It might even help the uh, Lawbringer find them in the coming weeks, months. We should have an agent on the ship if we're going to do that. Yeah. We can install a permanent agent, agent on the ship. Hmm. Mm hmm. And how would this agent contact you? Um, distance communication magic is difficult, rare, and expensive, and also easily spotted. You know, if there's a permanent magical item, all it takes is to detect magic to see right through the holes of the ship to find that thing. How how do you communicate with your agent on their boat? Uh, I suppose it would depend upon how developed the White Prince's spying. Uh, operations are like I would imagine in this world he would potentially have like a discrete communication device and like a lead like uh, like a cigarette holder or something like if depending on how big the item that has to be that is right. used to communicate and so right. on so it, it really how we do this kind of depends on what the infrastructure of the world is for espionage right so there might be one or two of those objects around but there there would only be one or two in the entire kingdom and they'd be extremely powerful um you know that that's a, an asset in and of itself that might be dangerous to risk if it falls into the hands of the enemy it'd be super fucking useful for them and it would cripple your ability to do things um the white prince would have to approve the use of any magical items um especially of that power to be deployed um, so, but you could make that recommendation it's just you only have so many high level magic items but what is the I... current threat to our nation the biggest threat it's probably this and now we have a spy ship who's in their good graces willing to work with us I think that that magic item um, I personally think that magic item probably should be recommended Hmm. It probably has a permanent beacon on it as well. Oh yes. Assume, so yeah. Yeah. Yes. All Ooh. magic items have permanent beacons, but the um, you know, if you can block it with detect magic, you can block it with you whatever it is that blocks the detect magic would block the beacon. And if they find out that they if they get it in their possession, they they could probably find a way to block the beacon too, maybe. Here's right? a wild question. Mm -hmm. Um, could you permanently beacon an item? and then have it contained in a small lead chest, and then you open the chest and close the chest in a sequence to communicate messages as the beacon turns on and off. Only if somebody is actively looking for the beacon at that point in time, um, then maybe you might be able to do that, but it would require 
precise timings um, over vast distances, which you just can't do since there's no like clocks. There are. No uh, well, I suppose you exists. could say. Um, well, I mean, it depends on how vast the distances are between the islands, because you could say, oh, from the time like you know the sun touches the horizon to the time the sun finishes going below the horizon that is when you're going to be communicating with this device and that should be relatively synchronized across a large geo geographic area that might work i would imagine that this wouldn't be like a super developed way of communicating it would almost be like semaphore or flags like on ship flags Right, so locate beacon last one round per level. So you'd have like a five minute period of time, uh, five to six minute, depending on the cleric, the, the wizard casting it. Um, you, for example, would have eight minutes in which this would work. So you'd need an eight minute window, which the sun setting is a pretty decent eight minute window. The amount of information you could get across would essentially be, um, you know, an, an detectable or non-detectable once in those eight minutes. So you could get eight bits of information or eight, you know, uh, on or offs in that time period. So there's not a lot of information that could be passed. You couldn't do a, okay. a full conversation, but you could do a couple of prearranged signals. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, that might be something that they might have considered as, a, like, a cheap tracking thing rather than just putting a beacon on a ship you would have like a oh you know uh three blinks means business as usual or four blinks means blah, blah you know right um and you right. could like synchronize um things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you could synchronize some amount of information that could work a great idea <laughs> arc mage <laughs> my question is um so i would imagine that i'm super good magical item that's good at communicating across long distances is super expensive however having a team of clerics doing locate beacon at night time is probably a lot more within budget perhaps yeah um the people who can cast locate beacon um are need to be fifth level wizards of which there's not that many around there are like seven eighth level wizards and then maybe another 20 or so fifth level wizards maybe 25 but they all have different jobs and they're all sort of scattered all over the place so you could gather a few of them to to specifically do this um the the magic item creation process is locked behind like 16th level characters and so there there's no more magic items being created at this time in the world especially in this So they area. are not creating magic items there anywhere no, in the Dardan. Right. There are pretty much no more magic items being created aside from like consumables, scrolls, and potions. Um, pretty much anywhere in the world at this point. Um, in, in this age of the world, this age of iron, um, great, the, like the, the creation process for magical items has more or less come to an end. There might be like some fantastical mages far off. But um... You like wouldn't Emmerich. know about that here. Okay, so I think that angle of attack is maybe faltered. What about um, what about just normal mundane like scrying or I think there's like spells like time pool, all those kind of things. What what sort of options would I have available to do that kind of stuff? Like, like could I could I clairvoyance to a boat? I don't, does that have a range? Mm, actually? Clairvoyance needs a fixed location, so a boat is always on the move. You could say like my bedroom and an area that you already know and you're very familiar with, and you can like draw a map to. You could always clairvoyance your bedroom, but on a boat, like a boat is always in a different place, and so um, it's not like a fixed. So you can't location. clairvoyance the captain's quarters of a ship. No, but if you like Got see it. a ship, you could clairvoyance like I want to see just beyond that side of the hull, and then you could look into that. Um, if the ship is moving, your your viewpoint is fixed, and so then like the ship would move out of it um, very quickly. But if okay, it's like now docked, I'm going to connect. Could... Mm -hmm. I'm going to connect. What if I detected a beacon? Could I clairvoyance around the beacon? Mm -mm. Damn. Okay, never mind. Uh, so uh, I'll explain. I'll, I'll go through that whole thought process with my friends and be like, mm, "I don't have, I don't have a solid solution yet." What do you guys think? 
Um, well, there are those magical items for communication, correct? Those exist. There might yeah. be. Um, I'm trying to think of what you might have on hand. Generally speaking, long distance magical communication is locked behind fifth level spells. Yeah. Sending is a, the the first spell that you can get that allows you to communicate over a distance more than like you know visible range, very reliably. Uh, are there, there pigeons? Is a, excuse me. Car are there carrier pigeons here? Or yeah, no? there there are birds that can do that. But again, the <clears> birds <throat> go between fixed locations. Fixed like to fixed, they return yeah. to a spot that they know intimately. Um, there is a combination of fourth level spells that will allow you to do this. Uh, a crystal ball will help you do this. But it will, it will show you something, but it doesn't allow both-way communication. Like, you could crystal ball, um, you know, your mom, and it would find her wherever she is. So you could crystal ball to someone who is maybe, like, writing something on the ground, and then mm -hmm. you wouldn't have mm -hmm. to give up. Yeah, does one of you have Magic Mirror? Is that a spell in one of your possessions? I don't, I don't think so. Come on. Ooh. What about... What about two wizards crystal balling each other? Could they then use like hand signals to communicate? Um, you might be able to find a creative method. Like you both crystal ball each other and then you have an assistant in the room who writes messages for you might be able to work. Yeah. Um, okay. You wouldn't be able to talk, but you would be able to like write messages in sand or something and then wipe it away and write another message. Yeah, or even just like hold up notes. Like mm -hmm. here's today's report. I read the ah, report and then take memory and then write it down. The Bishop of Port Prince has a spell called Reflecting Pool, which essentially functions like a crystal ball for one round per level. There you go. Um, so if you oh. know someone intimately, like you, this is the person with which you're deeply familiar, Bishop, um, you yeah. could Reflecting Pool on them. Uh, and okay. you get... See, it's a fourth level spell, so you can cast two of them per day, or like it would take one of your two spell slots to cast it. Um, yeah. I don't know how many spells you want to keep and how often you want to check you'll in. Communicate on Wednesdays and Fridays or whatever, and then those days you'll take the fourth level spell slot. <clears throat> yeah, that and, seems uh, that seems correct. Check in on what's going on if there's any update. Okay, so. The plan is that you would, oh wow, it's got a two hour casting time, right? So it's a big deal to cast this spell. It's yeah. a time consuming endeavor. Um, so twice a week, you will scry on this agent that you have sent in with the Jora, um, right when the sun sets and they will write messages in the sand, in like a sand board or something to you. And you will read them. I, I think this spell specifically says like, uh, written text is almost always too hazy to read, so Ooh. that would be hard. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 that makes sense. Uh, Fuck. The image is always is nearly always hazy enough to prevent the reading of script of any type. Okay. Is what it says right before the end. Nice. Well done, second edition. Yeah, um, <laughs> a lot of the spells will go out of their way to make it difficult to do um, instant communications because it's just such a powerful tool. So instant communication might not work, but you could reflecting pool like thumbs up, thumbs down. You could do like a, you know, a couple of signs, some very, very basic, like let's go, let's not go. Um, um, I think that instead, anytime they hit an island, they should just send a carrier pigeon if something is an issue. That means they're gonna have to carry a whole boat full of carrier pigeons. Do islands not have their own well, carrier like the, pigeons? So you, island island with carrier pigeons, you would like. I would train carrier pigeons to come to my house, and then I would give you a yeah. carrier pigeon, and then your carrier pigeon would just come to my house. They don't like follow a command, so you would have to leave Port Prince with like forty carrier pigeons, and then you could send them back to Port Prince, oh, but they okay. couldn't go to any other location. It's a, it Got would it. be a good idea, but if they ever be like, why do you guys have like 30 carrier pigeons? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. What's up with that? Yeah. Um, Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we could just, oh, this is, this is a, this is a little bit of a wrinkle here trying to come up with a good way to keep track of these guys. Yeah. Hmm. Logistics, baby. Hmm. 
Do we have any more ideas? Do we just go for a very basic deep deep undercover agent who passes messages to loyalists on island on islands when they pass through? Sort of low tech espionage rather than magical espionage. <clears throat> whenever they see something and then get to an island that is safe, they can then pass the message to someone there to yeah. pass to Port Prince. They would also almost definitely be carrying uh, a, leaded, a leaded beacon that they could um, Attempt. say they got separated from their boat mm -hmm. or they thought it was necessary to um, like say they're with. So we give them like a couple of rules like, oh, you get separated from your crew, you get lost from the boat, you open the lead thing, your beacon will be activated, stay alive until we send a crew to collect you. Or uh, turn it on when you're with the Crimson Fists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if the and beacon then, is active, it means send reinforcements to my position? Yes. Wow. So that would be that would be like the low-tech version of the yeah, espionage. Exactly. I'll, I'll explain yeah. that idea. I'll explain that idea to the group. And... Mm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. If the beacon's Simple, on, practical. they need help, they're near the Crimson Fists, and we'll know they're at least their last known location. Mm. Yes, we'll, which will allow us to better coordinate any response fleets that we may want to deploy. Uh, I think we should also gather as much information as we can from these prisoners uh, and relay it to the White Prince uh, via message. Every single thing that we can gather from them could be useful information to our Lord. Any concerns about someone trying to hide a lead-covered box? It depends like, on how big of an item a beacon can be. Um, it can be as small as a coin. Yeah, I yes, don't think there's so... any problem with having a lead box on the ship. Um, it's the Ajora knows that this person's going to be working for them. So you're not the going to give Ajora the ever... box. You're still going to put this with somebody else. You don't trust her enough to. We definitely want our own agent. We yeah, may we give we, what we might do is give a Jura a box, but not tell her that our agent has a box, so they both have mm -hmm. one. Ooh, sneaky. Smart. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They both have boxes, and inside these boxes are separate coins or something that are um, beaconed. Yeah, yep. and, and then every every regular interval, say sundown, we would have. Um, wait, is locate beacon? Oh, it's a. Is it level, level spell? three spell so yeah mm -hmm. I, I would suppose the message would go out to wizards that like oh we would have a rotation it's like your night tonight you're going to be checking for the beacon and then that information would be collated and messaged to some central informational hub right. so that way we so can that would coordinate be, across multiple items that would be Islands. you would be in charge of this because you're the one conducting this operation you will have at least a couple of apprentices um under your command and there's probably another mage here um who would work i'm sorry you would need um the ranks for wizards are apprentice are levels one and two mage is levels three and four masters are levels five and six and arc mages are levels um seven and eight so you would need a a master to be able to cast the spell with you and there's probably one other master mage on this island with you um, if you wanted you could maybe call in a master mage from somewhere else from some other duty the the bishop has the power to do that um but the number of yeah, people would... capable of doing this are mostly going to be you and one other wizard. Yeah, I would I would probably want to have someone on rotation, just so it's not a duty that I have to do every single day. So we'd probably yeah. do a week on of doing it and a week on of them doing it. So that kind of a like perfect a distributed uh, task. Excellent. Um, but yeah, that would that's like the basic plan that I've come up with. I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything or modify it. Seems good. Let's go with that. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. So, Sounds um, great. If you got each of these beacons is going to have its own unique signature. So to check in on one beacon is one spell casting. To check in on two beacons is two castings of the spell. Um, so you'll be confining a lot of your third level spell powers to this task when you are, um, when it's your turn. I think you have three second, three third level spell slots uh, and your master, mage master will have two third level spell slots. So this will be, you know, dedicating all of their third level spells, which are more or less the same as yours, to this project. Um, yeah, is that I'll... a worthy use of someone's time? Well, I probably wouldn't commission it myself, but I would make the request to the bishop and potentially the white prince. I would say, this is the request for resources that I've made. I think it would be mm -hmm. good to have one of our master 
wizards dedicated to this, gathering this information mm -hmm. and making sure that we uh, think. But I would think that, I, but personally, I would think that it's kind of like a little bit beneath me. Like I'm an archmage, mm -hmm. so I shouldn't be just like I shouldn't be like checking on messages, you know? Right. Right. Bishop, get, get a master to do it. Yeah, Bishop Cypress, are you willing to have one of your master mages dedicated to the tracking? of these agents on the sea. Uh, Pokemon Bro, challenges. Peak shell. Do you want to have one of your master mages dedicated to tracking uh, the beacon? Yeah. Of the um, yeah. Oh, fuck. How many, like, how? No, this seems pretty important. I would probably do this, even if it's like a pretty scarce resource now. Mm -hmm. I think so. I, this, think I mean, it... These are the, the crimson yeah. fists. Yeah, it's like, yeah, this is like the most important thing that's going on in like my job right now. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After all, it no, is the sure. outer ring and yeah. the midlands that are under your control yeah. that have been falling yeah. apart. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you get... Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'll dedicate all the resources I can to stopping these guys for sure. Absolutely. So now you got to just tell Ajora and Scarlet of their new task and at the same time promise to get their families free or are you only going to free their yeah. families after it's done what's the deal we should free their families right it's not that hard and is it just their families or is it going to be the families of every sailor on the ship a lot of people well, what did, of i guess money. we'll ask them what did nilram ask to what did nilram threaten Norm's a terrifying man. Carnage in his eyes. He doesn't say much. He lets you know that you'll pay the price if you... I, I don't know if he's going to... You know, he'd kill my family or torture them or sacrifice them to some dark do god or, or to just his own sick pleasure. What do you mean, dark god? Or whispers of something that lies beneath. They never mention what it is exactly, but they always say, you know, the, the drowned one or, or the one underneath or the, the one beneath the waves or... The dragon Telemachy. Have you ever heard of him? We all know the legends of Telemachy. Uh, rumor has it that he's been freed from the mountain that he once resided within. I expect I'm that's the work of the Crimson Fist. serve him. But to answer your first question, I don't, I don't know if you'd come after what, what the extent of Nilrum's evil is, but it's there. Understood. We will have your family uh, extradited and brought to the uh, Midlands to here. Does that please you? Thank you. Thank you so much. You have no idea the weight, the burden of this, this thing that's been on me for years now years has it been years two two years i think jesus fuck we're getting old i didn't know this yep. insane what year is it right now 1515 <laughs> what year is uh tombs of scorian they do it did they kill the dragon <laughs> <laughs> Any news from Solemn, good man? Yeah. No, Arcadia. What news or is from Arcadia, Arcadia good sir? Ah, <laughs> uh, the Dracassians won the war. Good. <laughs> um, I have to look up. I can't remember. I should know this. That's no, fine. It's not going to matter in, in okay. any way, shape, yeah. or form. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and your first mate, his family should be fine. Did Nilrum have any direct dealings with him, or are you the uh, point woman? Uh, I'm, I'm the captain. I'm in charge. I'm the one with which all the deals were made and enforced. They look, oh, she looks over to him, but I, I don't know. Maybe. Did you ever talk to uh, any of the Crimson Fists ca uh, first mate? Aye, of course I did. I've talked to them, and, and they're, they're, they're minions. Did they threaten your life slash your parents' life, your family's life specifically? Not, not specifically. Um, then your there grace. you have it. You have nothing to worry about. They're just large general threats to everything. We don't have 
the resources to go and get every single man, woman, and child part of each of your families off of your ship. The captain had a specific threat given to them, and that is um, the specific threat that we will deal with. Or we can deal with the lies and sl- that you've told us here. I'm sure that the bishop can be judge, jury, and executioner for the day. Would you like that? Take their heads, no. Perfect, then. It's settled. You work for the White Prince now. <laughs> All right. They swallow. They take their job. They'll take on a new sailor in this port. Um, you know, we'll leave that to, to in between sessions and episodes. And I think that's actually going to wrap us up for today. It's a short session, just a, about right. two hours here. But we will yeah, be back next good. week with a full fledged Tides of Death episode. And, uh, should we'll I read the questions the... now or should I wait for them for Nick to no, be back? Let's do them now. If there's one that's Nick specific, we'll we'll rope him in then. Yeah. Let's let's get our questions. Um done. here's a question hey. for you. Ha- for Koibu. Um have any of the gods been summoned by the spell Spirit of Power? Have we seen any of the results or fallout from it? I don't really know what that spell power. is. Um, no, we've never seen Spirit of Power used in any campaign. It's a seventh level cleric spell. Okay. I think you need to be level 15 or 16 to cast that. Um, 14. We, yeah, maybe it's 14. We, I just haven't had any 14th level clerics except for, <coughs> except for this one over here. Um, yeah, don't have that spell either. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I haven't seen it then. I asked the one about the rumors of the Dardenne to cause the maelstrom. Yep. Question for the players. Last week, John Brophy worried about the gods conspiring to destroy the colony on Sulphur Island. Are you worried about it? What about an attack from the White Prince now that he is consolidating his forces? Is Sulphur Island even all that important to you anymore? Uh, now that you have several islands under your control? I think we like Sulphur Island, at least I do, as like a staging point um, and like a point of contact for the other islands. It's nice to be able to go there and know that no one's trying to kill you and murder you. Um, it's nice to know that you're the murderer on the island, not the other way around. Hmm. What about you guys? Do you like Sulphur Island still or no? Um, yeah, I think it's nice. I think it's. I. I just think I like the representation of how much her like influence grows. Mm. Okay. Uh, for me, I don't really mind Sulphur Island. It doesn't really figure into my plans, except like as a staging point of defiance. Like, haha! Look, we took back the place you des- you destroyed. Blah blah blah. You yeah. know, like, look, yeah, I, yeah. you know, we're turning it against you. Your greatest triumph is being used against you. Here's another for Neil. Is the White Prince a necromancer the way Malsifer is a necromancer? What? No, the White Prince is a devout cleric of Astaire. He is a wonderful person who helps bring order to the chaos and stops the mad wizards from running and burning things. And why would you think he's a necromancer in any way, shape, or form? Just because we've got these people who have sworn their undying lives um, you know, to serve him doesn't mean he's a necromancer. That's just a ridiculous fan theory that holds no weight or water whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. Um, someone had one for me. Can Norm cast Fork Lightning? No, just Lightning. Um, question for Neil. Are there rumors in the Dardans of the cause of the Maelstrom? For example, do lay people think the area was punished by the gods... It's just a freakish natural phenomenon, etc. In the same line of questioning, are there tales of the Dardens without the storm, or has it been around for all of known history? The storm in the Dardens comes from the end of the Age of Might. Um, there are many ages in the world. Uh, we are currently in the Age of Iron. The one right before us was the Age of Might, and that border between the two of them is when a lot of things changed in the world. The gods sort of like shape reshaped some continents sort of broke apart some islands um the dardens was a completely different area and when the the gods ripped apart the world at the end of the age of might um the, the islands popped up and the maelstrom occurred and importantly resurrection was stripped from the land a whole bunch of super high level clerics just vanished from the world 
Um, the gods have essentially stopped appearing in person on the world since the Age of Might. Um, and they've all sort of taken a step back. And similarly, at the end of Age of Might, all of the like organizations of magic begin to fall apart. There used to be like wide-reaching um, schools of magic that worked together and had towers that were built for all people to use where you could easily teleport to and from and big libraries. The The wizard airship is like the last remaining um, remnant of that sort of magical organization, um, you know, in the known world at the time. So the the people of the world believe that the the cataclysmic events that happened at the end of it, the Age of Might are what brought around the Maelstrom and the Dardens and that like swirling whirlpool and all permanent storm is sort of thought of as like the anger of the gods made manifest it's not it has nothing to do with malchus you know the the big swirl sort of looks like his symbol but it's just a coincidence whirlpools make that storms make that naturally he's sort of a chaotic god so it makes sense that he like accidentally overlaps with this but you know it's not malchus because it's the heart of a stare and order and law and things going well um, and so the the interpretation is it's the the physical manifestation of the god's anger when uh, people were abusing resurrection and um, doing terrible things in their name. And then the last question, uh, what are some crazy conspiracy theories your character believes or have heard and find plausible? Are there any conspiracy theories that go around, I guess, the, the land, Koibu? Any good ones that, you know... Well, the problem is if I tell you it's a conspiracy theory, you know not to, to believe in it. There well, are that's all sorts not true. Of... Yeah, what? what are, like, some... I guess, what are some interesting rumors that get thrown around that the lay folk talk about? I mean, you... You ever visit social media? People talk about the stupidest shit all the time. You know, the, someone thinks that the white prince is a necromancer, which is ridiculous. Another person thinks the white el the white prince is actually like an elf or a half elf, and that's why he's got such a long lifespan. You know, other people think that um, um, you know, Telemachy is really in control of everything, and he's just using the white prince as a puppet, and he's like hanging out behind the scenes. Uh, other rumors might include that, you know, some of these islands that nobody lives in and establishments keep failing to, or cities and towns keep failing to establish themselves upon aren't actually due to monsters. It's because it's the secret base of the White Prince where he's developing like the next generation of clerics or wizards or items or, or war machines in order to spread um, the theocracy to the nearby islands. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So Archie once heard that if you um, eat cheese three days in a row, your next ship will sink. So he never does that. Mm. That's a good one. Um, I think no one believed in the conspiracy theory of the um, Fountain of Youth, but I think he's locked into it being true. Um, he's not sure yet. So he's kind of just that's one that he truly believes is true and real. Yeah, in um in Sale's hometown, there was a rumor that the local well was haunted by the soul of an evil witch, and kids used to dare each other to go up to it at night and uh, stick their heads into it, and uh, they say you could hear her cackling if you did it. People believe in the winter gods, you know, because the, the constellation of gods has, you know, the four major ones, and there's five summer gods, and three spring gods, and three fall gods, and someone out there is like, well, there's supposed to be either one or five winter gods, but, like, they're it not in the stars. It just seems weird that you wouldn't, that you would just, like, overthink it, like, oh, yeah, let's just not make the winter gods. You know, we've made all the other ones. Yeah, but, I mean, chaos and death, when they come together, you know, the, the summer gods, the gods between um, order and death. No, uh, mm -hmm. life, life in order, life in creation are all the summer gods. And so the winter gods would be the gods between chaos and death are made of chaos and death. And you know, what would those even be? How, how could you even have gods that are gods Rohi. of chaos and death? I would assume Rohi is the god of, um, I don't know. Uh, change. Maybe change, something like that. But I definitely think that Atropos is the winter god of hunger. Um, hunger and like lust. So I I believe that. That's what I believe. Rohi, I'm not I'm too sure. You, Maybe people change. People on the internet believe the damnedest things, guys. 
<laughs> so, so the winter gods kind of remind me just a little bit of like the gods of chaos from Warhammer. So I'd say mm. Atropos could be like the Solanesh equivalent, like pleasure and decadence yeah. and, you know, lustful feelings. And then you have Tsinch, which is the god of change. So we just kind of like need to find our, which would be Rohi. And then we just need to find the god of war and then the one of pestilence and decay. They're kind of like the horsemen. There might be mm -hmm. even more though. You never know. Mm -hmm. Well, people can't even decide how many winter gods there are. How could you possibly believe in any one of them? Hmm? Hmm? I believe in all of them. All four yes. at once. Ridiculous. All right, well, that's it for this session. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. And, uh, yeah. Happy, Happy evening, guys. Cheers, guys.